because it was like when I knew you in high school, that particular form of not knowing, um, I, I, I knew, uh, I had no idea of the bohemian kind of aspect of your life because we all wore school uniform, you know, and um, so we all kind of looked like we were similar, you know, and then you meet people and you work out we were different, of course. But that bohemian thing that you were living in, uh, there was no way for me to sense that or to even understand that, you know. Um, so it was only later through conversation though uh, that, and probably I, I didn't even have that concept then either. But yeah. uh, like I always, in my imagination, it's a bit like, um, you know, the Bloomsbury set and, and Virginia Woolf that you were kind of operating in those kind of circles at that point, you know, growing up in those kind of circles. So it's total other world to someone like me, that, you know, total other world. And of course we were, you know, on the pathway of hitting the 70s when radicalism was actually kind of normal, you know, a certain form of safe middle-class radicalism, you know. So I was kind of on that path. Um, towards becoming more radical and lifestyles and all of that and growing your hair long and you know all of those things some of which I partook in and most of it I didn't but I kind of aspire to that kind of world but that's not the same as the bohemianism that, in which you grew up which was like a tradition you know like a it's got it's like it's got a history behind it whereas we were all just going oh, I don't do that shit anymore I want to do this kind of shit now you know it was kind of very superficial really yeah and I, the whole thing, I was on the edge of the, all of those things. I was never actually in them, you know. So, it was, so to see you kind of be in the centre of a world like that, it's it's um, extremely interesting for me. Because Virginia Woolf's not real; she's just someone you read about, you know. But you're actually real. <laughs> and and you know, it's like that thing about. When we were that age, it was like, um, especially in dads, which I was on the edge of again, not in the middle of it, but you know, I, I've been in a room full of dance people, you know, it'd be 90% women, 10% men, and nearly all of them secure middle class backgrounds, almost no working class presence in contemporary dance at all at that time, you know, but all trying to live like they're poor. You know, because it's cool, you know, to be doing all of that stuff. And the, the only two working class people I know from that time in Melbourne in dance, the others are all sitting back comfortable now because they, Ros and I call it money in the bank, you know, it's just waiting. They'll be fine. You know, they get to 40 and they won't know what to do and then their parents will die and they'll have, you know, on and on it goes. The only two working class people I knew were interested in dance were David Ros and I. We, we actually um, really wanted to do it. Not, this is something I've always done or wouldn't it be lovely if I could, it was like, and therefore from the beginning had to kind of make it a bit more kind of earthy and basic. That was very interesting, very, very interesting. So it's like, be, be, therefore beginning to see those people who were trying to live those kind of radical social experiments of the early 70s were actually all just pretending, you know. And then they just grew up and they ended up living in Malvern and driving Volvos and things like that, and you know, none of which is bad, but it's like nowhere near anything. I ended up with driving a, drive, a Volvo actually, which is 26 years old when I drove Me it. Too. <laughs> a great car. But um, at the that time. The car was 26 years old, the one I. Yeah, mine. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's great. Two door. I, I have a two door. And I just loved the sound of the door closing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I foolishly thought those Volvos are very big, that's not going to suit me. And, and then I saw this two-door Volvo and I thought, oh God, that's got to be smaller. So it was old and orange, it was great. It was a great car. It, it would refuse to start if it was hot, but I never understood that, so I just waited for it to cool and started it again. Um, um, but it, it, was a, it was a terrific car, really great car. But 
after I bought it, I re parked it next to another Volvo exactly the same size. It's just a bigger fucking door. <laughs> One enormous door instead of two, two normal sized doors. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm easily fooled like that. Mm. Yeah, I love that web. When, when I saw that on the web, I loved it. I love those images. I, I love the whole thing of it. I love the way you write about it, all that. Well, I worked with a... You, you don't do complex senses. You, ah. you, you do a long list of statements. Yes. I love that. I was drilled in that when I first started writing um, my PhD, which is really the only thing I've written, apart from letters. Yes. I, I used to write a lot of letters to my father because he was in England or America and on ships. But when I had to write, um, I was introduced to a guy called Strunk, S-T-R-U-N-K. Yep. You might like Strunk. Seriously. Um, he was American and he was um, rebelling against the flowery, flourishing writing of the yeah. upper class. Yeah. Um, Americans who were very judgmental yeah. again, about working class people and their language and he wanted to write in a way that anyone could understand mm. and one of his um, rules was use no unnecessary words. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful That's and great. his writing is beautiful mm. and Strunk um, partnered with White, is it E.B. White, who wrote Charlotte's Web? Mm -hmm. They did some stuff together. Wow. And I love Charlotte's Web and the way yeah. that's written. Yeah, yeah. And, and that way of writing really suits children too. Yeah. Know, where you're not making the actual task of de decoding the complex words, the task, you're actually kind of drawing them into it. It's got, it's got, for me, it's got that kind of quality, that kind of there's something immediate about everything you've written and it draws me into the reality of that even though I've got no idea about the reality of that you know because I grew up in a totally different world yeah yeah, yeah it's great well done thank you very much well I just wrote the I'm, words I'm, I'm, and just you know to be frank about it you know I've spent years cramming as many adjectives as I can into everything I say when I